Hi, in this video, we will try to see how we can use PWM on Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller. Now, PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation and PWM is useful in number of different applications in embedded systems. As said, this is a combination of embedded systems and IoT learning with Raspberry Pi Pico. So, you may or may not use PWM with IoT projects, but it's still a must-know feature for any embedded enthusiast. So, let's begin. Now, what is the concept of PWM? This is one place where I couldn't avoid myself but simply keep text on my slide. So, PWM is a scheme or a method where a digital signal provides a smoothly varying average voltages. What it basically means is you know that the microcontroller pin can generate digital output signal. And by controlling or generating the digital output signal at a high frequency and by controlling the on and off period of the pulse, we can achieve a smoothly varying average voltage. As said, this is achieved with the positive pulses of some controlled width at regular intervals. And the fraction of the time spent in high is known as the duty cycle. Let's see the concept of PWM on a whiteboard. So consider that this is, just a moment. Now consider that this is the microcontroller and this is the output pin of microcontroller. Now instead of simply making it high or simply making it low, what we can do is we can generate a high pulse and then after a while we can make it low and then again generate a high pulse and then make it low. This is where you keep the high pulse higher and the low pulse lower or you can generate a high pulse like this or you can generate a high pulses like this. Now what I'm doing here is in this diagram I'm simply showing you how you can create or how you can just show the high and low of a pulse. But please understand when this is done at a high frequency then it generates or creates an average voltage. The concept here is this one it's called as T on and this small portion here it's called as T off. And duty cycle is nothing but T on divided by T on plus T off. We usually mention the duty cycle in terms of percentages. So, for example, if I am keeping the pulse on for 1 millisecond and I am keeping, keeping the pulse off for 1 millisecond, then it is 1 divided by 1 plus 1. So, it is 1 divided by 2 which is 0 0.5 or 50%. Now, when you keep on period as 1 millisecond and off period as 1 millisecond, it means you are generating a 2 millisecond pulse. 2 millisecond pulse is nothing but 500 hertz. Now, you will say, what's the big deal in that, Amit? Correct? I can always write down, let's say, LED dot value 1, give a time dot sleep of some controlled mechanism, let's say, 0.005 and I can make LED dot value 0 and again give some time dot slip. Now, <coughs> is it PWM? Yes, of course it is PWM. As long as you keep changing the time dot slip delays, it is PWM. The problem here is your microcontroller will be busy. Your whole program execution will be busy generating these pulses and you will not be able to do anything else. And that's where the on-chip PWM modules comes into picture. Now, the benefit with on-chip PWM modules is that you simply initiate it and once initiated, they will run on its own. So, you don't have to keep maintaining it. So, initiate and run. So, what happens is after you initiate and run, a continuous stream of pulses will keep operating or keep generating from that particular PWM pin and you can keep executing your other regular piece of code. This is the benefit of having an on-chip PWM. 
If you don't have an on-chip PWM, yes, you will have to generate that manually through your program. As discussed before, this is not an efficient option and therefore we use microcontrollers on-chip PWM modules. Now, if you want to go into the details of it, you can definitely look into the RP2040 datasheet, which is the microcontroller used on the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W boards. But in a nutshell, I am trying to explain it with this presentation here. So RP2040, I am referring this here on purpose because that's the controller used on Pico board. So this microcontroller has essentially got eight PWM slices. Slices? Nothing but a particular word that Raspberry Pi Pico uses. You can very well call it as modules. So it has eight PWM modules or eight PWM modes that can be used or eight PWM circuitries that can be used. Each slice is having two channels. It means you have eight PWM modules and each one has two channels called A and B. So all in all, it may say 16 PWM channels can be used at a time. Now both can be used as output to generate output signal or one can be used as input as well. Now why you would use input because you may want to find out the width of a particular input pulse or maybe use it as an input to trigger the other PWM. Depends. <clears throat> For now, let's focus on the total 16 PWM outputs that we have. The good thing is these 16 PWM outputs are not tied to any particular pin of microcontroller. If you go back in time and if you select a microcontroller like Atmega328, which is available on Arduino Uno, then it also has got a PWM pin or PWM feature, but it is tied to specific pins. <clears throat> you cannot use PWM on all the pins. <clears throat> this is not the limitation with RP2040 being one of the latest microcontrollers in the industry. <clears throat> So the benefit is you can use any pin of RP2040 to be used as a PWM. How? Let's see. As I said, there are 8 PWM slices from 0 to 7. So if you look at it, PWM module 0 and its channel A and B can be configured with pin number 0, pin number 1, as well as pin number 16, pin number 17. Module 1 can be used with pin 2, 3, 18, 19. Module 2, 4, 5, 20, 21. So on up to module 6, which can be used with pin number 12, 13 and 28, 29. And the last module that is module 7 can be used with pin number 14 and 15 only. Because just the reason that we are uh, done with the pins that are available. All in all, good thing is any of the 3W30 pins can be used as PWM. Now, Talking in terms of MicroPython, how do you do that? How do you generate PWM on a particular pin? So these are some of the functions which are important over here. What you do is from machine along with pin, now you import the PWM module as well. Then you initiate the PWM like this. As mentioned, you can use any of the 30 available GPIO pins to generate or use as PWM. Then what you do is you set a frequency to PWM. For example, here in this snippet, one kilohertz is specified as a speed or frequency of PWM. And after which you can mention a duty cycle value between 0 to 65,535. Now this is a 16 bit value and I know that we want PWM between 0 to 100 percent. But 0 to 100% is a very less range, particularly when you want to do a thyristorized firing angle control or speed control of a motor. So we get more precise, more crude number of values over here. Of course, 0 will mean 0% and 65,535 will mean 100%. 100% means what? Your PWM signal is almost all the time on like this. Very short burst of 0 or even not that, all the time on. Means you will get full voltage at this level and you will get least at this level. And as you go on increasing the duty cycle, first you will notice a wave like this and this. And as you progress, let's say at 50% PWM or half of this value, 
your wave will be equally on and off on and off regrets for my bad drawing but just try to understand the concept now how do you convert that what are the applications of it the simplest application that we are going to see is led fade just to try this out and the other application that we are going to see with pwm is motor speed control now let's see the fading effect of led in this video and we'll see how to control the speed of dc motor using pwm in the next video <laughs> for this experiment i'm going to use a simple led connected to the raspberry pi pico pin you can connect an led to any pin to be honest so it doesn't matter much and now we'll try to write a code for it now writing code for it is going to be pretty much straightforward and simple let's see how do we do that now let's try to write the code for it now to do that what i'll do is i'll simply copy at least these many lines over here and then we'll see how to use each so i'm going to use import time just to generate time delays then there is prom machine import pin pwm what i'll do here is i'll simply connect it to pin number 0 which is the first pin on raspberry pi pico board easier to find set the frequency as the same 1 kilohertz that is good now we want to see a dramatic effect of this pwm so instead of just setting duty i'll do while true and i'll then i'll take a for loop okay so for i in range 0 comma 65535 comma 5 so each time i will increment by 5 and what i'll do is i will write the value of i to this pwm channel you can also have multiple pwms and call it pwm1 pwm2 or pwm3 and things like that similar to this now let's give a time delay over here so that you can observe the change in pwm but it will give a small time delay so that it doesn't give much big of an impact then what i'll do is i'll print here 100 percent and then we'll give another time dot slip here for us to observe the impact now what we do here is we are going from zero percent to 100 percent duty cycle and we are waiting there for two seconds now what i'll do is in the second iteration i will start from 65535 i want to end at zero and then i will decrement it by minus five everything remains the same led connected to pin number zero you can simply use a register and connect led to pin number zero and we'll see the output of this so i'll run this current script and i will show you the output how it goes how it works with led give me a minute i'm turning on my camera and then i'll restart the code <clears throat> so i have an led module connected here for this experiment now let's do one thing let's stop this execution of code and let's start it again now look at this led okay this is the interface I'll try to have an angle to see the output. So it slowly and gradually reached out to 100%. If you can see, now it will start the downward descent. And if you notice carefully, you will find this LED going down in its brightness, slowly, gradually. And then it turned off to 100%. Again, we start and we come up to. 100%. So, if this is not that clear to you, just wait a minute. Let me just adjust the focus. Now, to make things easier to visualize, what I'll do is instead of this LED module, I will simply use an LED over here. Anode of the LED goes to the GPIO pin 0 or wire connected to it. And the cathode of the LED will go to ground through a resistor. I am using 33, 330 ohm resistor over here. Now, if you can see, the fading effect will be very nicely and clearly observed. 
Can you see that? Now it's 100%. And then when the <coughs> downward descent starts, it will again start trading down or going to zero. But it is gradual. So you notice it only when it goes further down and turn it off. You can increase the delay very well to notice it better but it will take just whole lot of time that's it so 100 percent let's call it on and 100 percent let's call it off and let me run the code now can you see that yep i guess this is much better of view now After a point, you will see the brightness or you will be thinking or it appears like the brightness is full. But now the delay is 0 0.01, so it will be very, very slow to reach to 65,531. What we can do in that case is I can increment it by 50 and decrement it by 50, which will further make things easier for us. Yeah. You immediately saw it glowing to full, but uh, again 0 0.01 means we are having a delay of 10 milliseconds. It's quite big. So it's 100% on. Now when it goes down or when it reduces, it will reduce drastically or slowly. You can also print the value of i here if you want to understand at which point you start observing the change. Now, if you have a CRO or an oscilloscope, what you can do is you can connect this pin to the oscilloscope pin and see or notice the difference in the beam. Now, I am increasing and <coughs> decreasing it for the sake of demonstration purpose. When you do speed control of motor or something like that, you may want to fix this PWM value to a particular place and then keep continuing with your code. As long as you keep a value there, the wave will keep generating. So this is how <coughs> you can experiment with PWM of Raspberry Pi Pico. In the next video, we'll see how you can perform the speed control of a DC motor using the same phenomena. Thank you for watching this video.